I see that people have started joining. That's good. Hello to everyone. So today we have uh, we have a book that I have uh, presented to you, and uh, you know that today we are reading this. Okay, so a story about a teenage girl, written by herself in a way, right? So kind of a diary that we get a chance to read and. Uh, perhaps talk a little bit about or maybe you would like to ask some questions as we are going in the chat so why not maybe maybe we can tackle those as well so the beauty of today's read is in the fact that it's a very easy read so it's a truly summer read very relaxing very easy and hopefully you will have your meditation moments as we as we go along the lines so let's start hey world here i am okay so about loving in my family we don't talk much about loving my mother never bakes us pies or knits us socks more than once she's put cream in my father's coffee, although he takes it black. When she gets home from work, she collapses with her feet up. I have to shake her away when it's time to eat. My father never sends her roses or valentines. He just says to her, April, listen to this, April. Then she yawns and opens half an eye and listens while he reads her something by E.B. White or Tolstoy. I listen too, and they listen when I find something so perfect, it must be shared. Nobody ever says, not now, I am busy, but nobody asks me about my homework either, and I do not wait to be told it's time for bed. If I want to floss my teeth, that's my affair. They couldn't care less. I used to think they didn't know I was there. If I disappeared, I thought they would never notice. But I was wrong. My father looks up all at once and asks me, Catherine, tell me, what is truth? And he doesn't go back to his book till he's heard my answer. My mother does leave me to get the supper ready, but she brings me home 10 brand new drawing pencils. Someday I'll send my mother one dozen roses. Someday I'll knit my father a pair of socks. When I have children, I'll tell them it's time for bed. So far so good? Yeah, you're coping all right? I think there are quite a lot of words that you already know and you see them in context and that's the beauty of that. But I also ask them sometimes, what is truth? And I leave them to get the supper and bring them pencils. Loving isn't as simple as I once thought. Talking about it isn't what matters most. That's an interesting thought. Maybe you can give a comment in the chat what loving is to you. How do you understand loving? That would be a pleasure to read once we finish today. Yeah, how about that? And you see this lovely crayons down as a bouquet. Isn't that lovely? Today. Today I will not live up to my potential. Today I will not relate well to my peer group. Today, I will not contribute in class. I will not volunteer one thing. Today, I will not strive to do better. Today, I will not achieve or adjust or grow enriched or get involved. I will not put up my hand, even if the teacher is wrong and I can prove it. Today, I might eat the eraser off my pencil. I'll look at the clouds. I'll be late. I don't think I'll wash. I need a rest. Have you ever felt that? Have you ever felt that you need this kind of today? I think Catherine has spoken very well about today. I think we all have this kind of days when we, 
would like to have our eraser eaten off a pencil, right? If we have one. So you can write a couple of words about that as well. How often do you have your two days? Growing pains. Mother got mad at me tonight and bawled me out. She said I was lazy and self-centered. She said my room was a pigsty. She said she was sick and tired of forever nagging, but I have her no choice. But I gave her no choice. She went on and on until I began to cry. I hate crying in front of people. It was horrible. I got away though and went to bed and it was over. I knew things would be okay in the morning. Stiff with being sorry, too polite, but okay. I was glad to be by myself. There is this little one here. She bawled me out. When you fall out with your parents, they can bawl you out. So they can give you a good scolding because maybe they are unhappy about your behavior, the way you do things. And I believe that sometimes when your room is a mess or maybe you nag forever, this might cause this bowl out thing. That's a good one maybe to remember. But then of course, the true message here is that, that this girl really wants to be herself. It's okay to cry when you feel like you're hurt and maybe you would like to take some time to understand why you are hurt and she's very open about that so i like that do you then she that's her mom she came to my room and apologized she explained too things had gone wrong all day at the store she hadn't had a letter from my sister and she was worried Dad had also done something to hurt her. She even told me about that. Then she cried. I kept saying, it's all right, don't worry, it's all right, don't worry. And wishing she'd stop. I'm just a kid. I can forgive her getting mad at me. That's easy. But her sadness... I don't know what to do with her sadness. I yell at her often. You don't understand me. But I don't want to have to understand her. That's expecting too much. So you see, that's growing old for you. Or I would rather say growing adult. Yeah, so that would be the right way to put it. Once you are a teenager, everything goes. You have a right to yell. You have a right to get sorry or to hate everyone. But the older you become, the more uh, accepting you, you, you've got to be if you would like to be accepted by other, other adults. And that is hard for the girl at the moment to see her mother cry. That's like a brick wall or a loving wall around you crashing down. Okay, so... Ah, uh, yeah, I think I can relate to that and understand that. How about you? Do you feel sad? Yeah, when grow, uh, grown ups around you start telling you things about other grown ups? I think it's easy not to be able to react to that, let's say. Yeah, quite understandable. You see, that's a nice picture here provided. Maybe a fight. Emily and I were about to have a fight. I could feel it in the air, like a thunderstorm coming. I was in a foul mood and she was feeling much the same. It was going to happen any minute. Yet, I didn't feel strong enough to get good and mad and then got to the trouble of making peace. We were going to end up barely speaking for at least two days and we'd both hate it. It's terrible when you are dying to talk, to have just made a vow never to speak to the other person again. Emily Blair, I said, struggling with my conflicting emotions. Are you trying to pick up a fight with me? I wasn't, but I will, if that's what you are after, she growled. Then in the nick of time, my mother walked in. 
She looked from me to Emily and back again. Then she plugged in the kettle. What's wrong with you two? She asked. We didn't answer. We glowed. By now we knew we had gone too far to back down. The fight had as good as started. Mother pulled out a chair and sat down. Why don't you both just pitch in and start calling each other names, she said. If you hurry, you can get it out of your system before the kettle boils. Then we can all have some tea. Kate, you begin. Why me? I yelled, feeling like an idiot. Because you are the hostess, of course. Tell her, that's Emily, tell her she is two-faced and bossy and preachy. Go on, Kate. Do I have to dictate your entire part? But she isn't. Not to faced anyway, I said. And we are both bossy sometimes. I ground to a halt. Emily had started getting out the tea things. When I am preachy, you have it coming, she said over her shoulder. The kettle began to sing. Emily poured boiling water into the teapot. She kept her back turned. All at once I knew I was going to laugh. No matter how hard I tried not to, I could feel giggles bubbling up inside me. I chuckled, mother joined in, and when Emily turned around, she was wearing this silly green. Be careful, it's hot, she instructed, handing us each our mug. Then holding her own aloft, she said, to us, champion lightweight battlers of Riverside. Don't forget me, my mother said. I did most of the work. Then she took a swallow instead of just pretending like Emily and burned her tongue. Afterwards, I asked Emily, did we have a fight or didn't we? Weren't you there? Was all she would answer. Don't you find it typical of two friends picking at each other? I think it can be very, very true. Lots of nice words, lots of interesting words. I would like to go back and just show you a couple here. Pitch in and start calling each other names, yeah? Uh, to get something out of your system, that would be, that would be another one right? Preachy, right? So telling people what to do and what not to do. So being preachy there. Okay, so the cattle began to sing. That's a lovely verb to use when talking about how the cattle goes off. Um, and then a couple of things here. Um, uh, what is it? Yeah, so how a person can chuckle. A kind of a laugh, right? Uh, you can also wear a silly green. So it's not just about clothes that we wear. It can also be about a green. Isn't that lovely? That's the beauty of the English language to you. About notebooks. Being future linguists, I hope you all enjoy having your little writing scribbled somewhere. Maybe you have your notebook, maybe you have a diary, maybe you have a piece of paper when, where you write a shopping list, that'll do for now. And that's about Catherine's notebooks. She loves them. I love the first page of a new notebook. I write the date crisply, yeah, clearly, neatly. My whole name marches exactly along the line. The spaces are always even. The commas curl just so. I never have to erase on the first page. Never. She's neat. When I get to the middle, there are lots of eraser holes. The corners are dog-eared. Whole paragraphs have been crossed out. My words slide off the lines and crowd together. I wish it was done. I have a dream that someday someone will say, here, 
give me that beat up old notebook. You needn't bother filling in all those other zillion pages. Start a new one this instant because it's February, because today is not Wednesday, because everybody deserves beginning again more often. I think that's very true about notebooks. You know, when we start, we would like to have everything very neat, but as we go along, we can easily have a dog, a dog ear made like that. Yeah, so if we would like to remember where the page is or create, um, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, an eraser hole. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to say. Okay, so she continues. Yet, crazy as it sounds, I always like to write the number eight. Even on the third last page of a messy notebook, it meets itself so neatly, it's almost magic. And I love swooping big E's and looping small Z's. If, for some reason, I get to write a word like quintessence, maybe or something with lots of M's, or balloon, or rainbow, or typhoon, or lollipop, I forget I'm sick of the book with its stupid margins. And while I'm writing, I hum inside my head. That's how she enjoys writing. And I think we also do this silly thing sometimes, yeah? Swooping big E's or looping small Z's or writing a long strange word with lots of extras, yeah. Alone. I am alone and lonely. My own sadness makes everything around me more beautiful. The dusk falls softly, as simply as a page turning or a bird lighting on the ground. The sky grows dull rose near the rooftops. And high above me, a sea blue green. I am caught up in it, all and small. I search for words. I ache with words I cannot find. Inside, the phone rings. Where is Kate? Dad asks. I'm here. But I say nothing. He calls, but I do not answer. She's not in yet, he says to someone. I'll tell her you phoned. I could go in. Soon it will be supper time anyway. Time for eating and talking and being part of things, belonging again to the horrible, boring, nice, funny, noisy, busy, angry, loving world of people. I'll go in when I have to, in half an hour. I'll even like it. Now, now I'll stay out here, hugging my separateness, my ownness. I'm alone. I'm lonely. I'm growing into me. Beautiful words and very true. Separateness, own oneness, growing into yourself. Lovely. I think we all need these moments, don't we? How do you grow into yourself? Write in the chat. That would be nice to read out later. How do you grow into yourself, guys? Oranges. I peel oranges neatly. The sections come apart cleanly, perfectly in my hands. When Emily peels an orange, remember that's her friend, she tears holes in it, chews squirts in all directions. Kate, she says, I don't know how you do it. Emily's my best friend. I hope she never learns how to peel oranges. I think we all love being expert in some things. And whenever we get a question, how do you do that? We might feel a little bit proud so that we could show to people what we do. And if they cannot replicate what we do, we sometimes may feel even, even uh, happier for having this opportunity to teach this person uh, this ongoing thing that he asks for. So that is friendship to you as well. Do you peel oranges all right? Did you know that these parts of oranges are called sections and not pieces? Yeah, so there comes a word for you, right? So notice that about oranges, guys. Every so often, 
Every so often, my father tries making bread. He's too impatient, though. He puts in on top of the radiator to make it rise faster. And I doubt if he needs it all as long as the books say he should. He likes to see results. When it's baking, the whole house smells like heaven. But you do have to hurry and eat it while it's fresh. The next day, it's almost too heavy to lift. The mood only strikes him once every couple of years. Mother shakes her head and gets out of his way, but I sit around and cheer him on. It's exciting. I've no idea what starts him off on bread making, but I'm glad he does it. It makes him ridiculous, mysterious, and my own particular father. Yeah, she, she does write in a very loving way about her father. Uh, and, that's, and that's a nice thing that we have it in here. It gets out of his way. Yeah, so mother shakes her head and gets out of his way. She gives him space to do that, right? Uh, but this idea of making bread doesn't um, start him off. Yeah, so he doesn't do that very often. It is once every couple of years. That's a nice hobby. Do you have a hobby that you do once every couple of years? Have you tried anything um, as fragmented as that? Spaced in time, I could say. I told you so. My mother never says, I told you so. She doesn't believe in it. She calls it rubbing salt into the wound. But sometimes her silences are so loud that we wish she'd give in for once and get it off our minds. Okay, so before we jump further, uh, well, of course, you know this one. Yeah, so when you have a sore part and someone rubs something in, so you feel even worse than you're already uh, feeling. And then, of course, the beauty, notice the beauty of this word, silence in plurals. She has her silences that are so loud. And I think when you truly feel for someone in your family or a friend of yours, and when this person is mad and goes uh, silent, then of course you can notice that instantly. And this isn't something that I'm sure you like. Okay, so this is too noticeable and you would like this person to speak up and speak to you and turn to you and spend time with you. Mother has a talk with me. I want to have a talk with you, Catherine, my mother said. She never has talks with me and she doesn't call me Catherine. Yes, I said on guard, intrigued. I've been told that you've been seeing a lot of that Nelson boy, she said. She sounded slightly nervous. I wanted to laugh. I only wished the rumor were true. But I said coolly, I don't like some of your friends, but I don't consider it my business to mention it. Your sudden disappearances speak volumes, mother said, relaxing. And, you, and your trapped look when you haven't made your get aware in time. I laughed and told her the truth. I really like Dave Nelson. So does every other girl in school, but he hardly knows I'm alive. Mother gave me a long, thoughtful look. Maybe we should see about having your hair properly styled, she said. My mouth dropped open. Well, Mother said, going pink, I don't want you conspicuous, but I don't want you invisible either, Kate. I went to bed confused, but mostly amused at Mother. See, isn't it beautiful? The girl's mom wants her to look good in front of the boy that she's attracted to. That's a very strong relationship, don't you think? When your mother or either of your parents want to do something for you so that you so you would look so you wouldn't, as she says, look invisible, unnoticed. Right? Working parents. I've read lots of articles about working mothers. I have a working mother. I also have a working father. And I think he deserves mention. 
yeah, there is a funny picture of her father working. He's got to be, yeah, so doing some work with maybe his accounts or at a, at a shop. So probably he works at a shop, at a bookshop, working parents. I think most of us have had those. Um, while parents are working, we're having fun. Are you? Are you having fun, fun when your parents are at work? Do you like it? Or you think that they do not deserve mention for this? Who you are. Today, Miss um, McIntyre, our guidance counselor said, you have to decide who you are and where you're going. Sounds simple, just decide. I think it is simple for Emily. She's Emily Blair, daughter of manager of the Royal Bank, member of the Presb uh, Presbyterian Church, high achiever in school, sister of Louisa, and she knows where she's going, or she thinks she does. She wants to teach grade one. She's out of her mind. Only, maybe. I could do that about me too, of course. There are labels that partly fit. I too am the child of my parents. I expect I'm beginning to see that mother and dad are not just my parents the way I used to think. They're separate people with thoughts of their own. Sometimes they seem like strangers. I don't belong to a church. I'm Jewish, but I don't know yet what being Jewish is going to mean to me. That's not what I'm talking about, though, or it's only one part of it. I want to find out how important it is, my being Jewish, but I'd like to be everything else too, and nothing else. I'd like to teach grade five, but I want to write a symphony and live in a lighthouse and fly an airplane. I'd like to own an orchard or keep bees. I'd like to be a policewoman, and I've thought about being a nun. I think I'll write books. I sound like a little kid. There are so many roads though. I can't write a symphony, I know that. And I'm pretty sure I'd never make it as a nun, but I just might keep bees if I really wanted to. Except, uh, what about my lighthouse? Right now, I could be anybody. Mr. McIntyre, can't you understand that? I could be anybody at all. I am not ready to choose and besides, I'm choosing more than one road. I'm putting myself together, Miss McIntyre, but it is like a jigsaw puzzle. I keep on finding new pieces. If you were once a puzzle, you soon found the edge pieces and fitted yourself inside. There is no edge to me yet. I hope the picture turns out to be worth the work. I hope I never discover an edge. Okay, guys? That's, that's our reading for today. And that's a beautiful piece to finish with. Who you are and how easy it is to think of what you want to be for some people. And then how difficult it can be to actually become someone. And then, of course, there is, well, a big thought in here. If you were once a puzzle, you soon found the edge pieces and fitted yourself inside. I don't know. Do you feel as a puzzle sometimes? And I think we never want to discover an edge. We would like our wishes, ideas, dreams match so that we can all attain something we mostly want to have, to do, to feel, to like, to love. So I hope you never discover an edge. Let's see, what comments have we got? I know that I've asked you for some comments. Uh, I think when you get older, you become wiser. Well, Daddy, this can be true. But at the same time, do you know old people who might be a little bit silly? That is possible. I don't think that wisdom comes with age, but it definitely comes with thinking, don't you think? Yeah, Yelena, I'm still growing into myself in a way. Me too. 
me too. I think we are all growing into ourselves and uh, this is the hardest thing, as philosophers say, to get to know yourself and then keep pushing other people around. That is true. That is true. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, let me take you to this page, right? So, and uh, I'm wishing you all the very best. Have a lovely evening, and I'm going to see you on Wednesday. We're going to read love pages from the love story. It's going to be awesome. Bye-bye.